in this problem we have to find uh, what is the minimum number of perfect squares who, whose sum is equal to a given number for example if we have a value of 20 this is our input then we can break it into 16 and 4 16 is the square of 4 and 4 is the square of 2 so both of these are perfect squares so here the answer should be 2 what is the maximum number of uh, perfect squares that can add up to this it can be the number itself since 1 is a perfect square 1 square is 1 so you take 20 times 1 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 20 times so it will be 20 so maximum is this value what is the minimum the best case is when the number itself is a perfect square for example it's 25 then we know that it's 5 square so best case would be 1 and the maximum value will be the number itself n so in most cases our answer will lie between this range but both of these are inclusive so our answer will be one of these values so how can we find this minimum value so let's uh, take an example here so let's say we have a number 13 so we know that we can break it into a uh, 9 and 4 9 is a square of 3 and 4 is the square of 2 so how did we arrive at this so if we are given a number we will see that it will break into squares which are strictly less than this or if it's a perfect square then we will return one so uh, we have to keep track of what are the perfect squares below this value and how many such values can be there it can be root n so uh, one square would be one two square would be four three square would be nine and if we see 4 square it overshoots this value and what is the square root of 13 it will be 3 point something so you take the integral part of this so there can be at max root n perfect squares below this given value so what we will do uh, we will see that how can we break 13 so we know that the perfect squares below 13 are 1 4 and 9 so uh, there are three possibilities whether one is in the solution or not so if one is in the solution then this will denote that we have added taken one so we have, our count becomes one and then the remaining value will be 13 minus 1 that is 12 and if 4 is part of the solution there can be multiple occurrences as well so if 4 is part of the final solution then the remaining will be 9 we have taken 4 so remaining is 13 minus 4 or 9 next whether 9 is part of solution or not so if we take 9 the remaining will be 4 now we have to solve what is the minimum uh, number of perfect squares which add up to this so again uh, below 12 these are 1 4 and 9 so if we take 1 it becomes 11 if we take 4 it becomes 8 if we take 9 it becomes 3 and here it will be 8 then 5 if we take 4 it will be 5 and if we take 9 then it becomes 0 for 0 means that we have reached a value so this denotes termination next for 4 the values less than this are 1 and 4 itself so if we take 1 it will be 3 if we take 4 again it's 0 so we it's a termination condition and here we will see that we are starting to find some repetitions 8 is here 8 is here also 3 3 so we will solve this multiple times here again the values less than 8 will be 1 and 4 so it will have two branches 7 and 4 here also it will be the same thing similarly for 3 so you can naturally see that we have broken the problem into smaller problems and we are having repeated uh, overlapping solutions so we will use dynamic programming here and we will solve the problem bottom up so for solving any value we need a value less than this all these are less than this since we are subtracting some perfect squares and these will be some positive values 
so if we subtract some positive value from this these numbers resulting numbers will be less than this so uh, if we solve smaller values before reaching a larger value then we can get it in get it done in how many times we need root n comparisons so if we are trying to find for how many perfect squares we need to make it n then uh, the perfect squares less than n will be root n perfect squares like this uh, perfect squares less than 13 are 3 because root of 13 is 3 point something so if we take square root of 4 it will be more than this so for nth number we need root n comparisons because a smaller parts we would have already solved so for 1 it will be 1 for 2 it will be 2 for 3 it will be 3 for 4 it will be again 1 it's 4 is 2 square then similarly let's solve for uh, 5 5 can be broken into 1 and 4 so if we take 1 it will become 4 if we take 4 it will become 1 we will see which is minimum 1 we have added so the value for 4 is 1 so the solution for this is 1 and this is also 1 so both minimum of these will be 1 1 plus 1 1 for this branch 2 so the solution for 5 is 2 next we have 6 6 again 2 branches 2 squares are less than 6 so 5 and 2 so for 2 it's 2 for 5 it's 2 so for 6 it will be minimum of 2 and 2 which is 2 and then 1 for this value so for 6 it will be 3 then let's solve for 7 again 1 and 4 which is 6 and uh, 3 it's 3 here for 3 and for 6 it's 3 so for 7 it will be 4 then for 8 1 and 4 which is 7 and uh, 4 for 4 it's 1 so naturally we will take this so we take one of 4 and another for 4 it's 1 so for 8 the solution will be 2 next for 9 it's a perfect square we will get one of the values as 0 so we will end here so for 9 it will be 1 for 10 it will be 1 4 and 9 we will subtract these so it breaks into 9 6 and 1 so for 10 it will become 2 minimum of these plus 1 for 11 1 4 and 9 10 6 and 2 so it will come out to be 3 for 6 uh, for 2 it was 2 and then 1 so 3 similarly for 12 and finally for 13 we have broken in into 3 branches so we take the minimum of these we, we will not expand these since we have already solved it before reaching 13 so for 12 it's 3 so 12 12 will return 3 9 will return 1 and 4 will return 1 so we take minimum minimum are these two any of these so we know that we have to take 1 4 and 1 9 uh, we don't need the exact value we just need the count so minimum of these three will be 1 and 1 for this branch which is 2 now let's take another example let's take 12 so less than 12 what are the squares 1 4 and 9 so there will be three branches corresponding to each and uh, here it will be 11 remaining here it will be 8 remaining here it will be 3 remaining for 3 let me write the solution for 3 the solution is 3 for 8 the solution is 2 and 11 the solution is 3 so we will pick this branch we will not pick these branches so here the solution is 2 and 1 for this 4 so total it will be 3 so for 12 it will be 3 and the answer would be 1 is this 4 
and 8 will be broken into 4 and 4. So this is the sol solution for 12 but we just need to return 3. So what will be the time complexity here? So uh, we will be solving for uh, each number from 1 to n or rather 0 to n and for solving kth number number k we need root k comparisons for n we will need root n comparisons similarly for 1 root 1 that is one comparison and constant also here so it's the sum of root 1 plus root 2 plus root 3 plus all the way up to root n so what is this time complexity a sim simple estimate would be to uh, this is n numbers so take the highest one so whatever is the time it should be less than n times root n we have taken the maximum value other values are in fact less than root n so time is strictly less than n times root n that is n raised to the power 3 by 2 or or n raised to the power 1.5 so it's better than n square but it's uh, more than order n and another way would be to think of integration so take integration from 0 to n and root x dx so x varies from 0 to n this is in continuous domain but just for approximation we can get some bound so this we are adding all the square roots from 0 to n so it will be integration of this will be uh, x raised to the power 3 by 2 since it's x raised to the power half so we will add plus 1 and then multiply by this divide by this so dividing by 3 by 2 means multiplying by 2 by 3 plus some constant so take 0 n so roughly or uh, 2 by 3 times n raised to the power 3 by 2 and minus some some constant will be there so uh, again uh, it's a rough estimate uh, not exact you can solve it what should be the exact a more tighter bound but roughly it will be less than o of n raised to the power 3 by 2 which is uh, better than n square but worse than order n so let's write the code for this so we are using dynamic programming so we will keep the solutions from 0 to n n minus 1 before solving n So we are using one more since uh, some of the branches may terminate on if the number is perfect square then you see here 0 coming in. So for 0 we will return 0. Then we will start solving from 1 x less than equal to n plus plus x so we will solve for all values from 1 to n then we have to see which, which is the minimum so we will finally be putting this min val in the solution for corresponding to x so worst case would be x itself take all ones so this is the upper bound it will gradually improve so let's take the all the squares perfect squares less than x so let's take y equal to 1 and its square is again 1 square of 1 is 1 so while square is less than or equal to x we will do min val equal to min of min val and 1 plus if we include this square term then remaining value will be uh, x minus square and we have added one since we have included this square so whichever is minimum 
and then we need to increment this y and new square will be the square of y so square is always the square of y and finally this min value will contain the minimum for which branch we got got the minimum value finally we return the last value that is nth value which we are solving solution is accepted and let's look at this we are around 73% better than 73% of the accepted submissions now let's uh, do this in java and not much change will be required here and here the time complexity is even better it's around 86% of the accepted submissions and finally we will do it in python 3 and the python solution is also accepted